Welcome back to the Corner Faster Get Fast series. We're getting ready for the Glen, using the iRacing simulator to take 50 laps and get up to speed in preparation for the Champ Car race. That's actually just about one week away. This video is one of a series, and we're going to focus on steering and the flat car concept. Previously, we spent a bit of time learning the layout, looking ahead with purpose, driving at the limit, finding brake zones, rotating the car with pedals, and at this point, we are ready to start putting some of the finer touches on our driving style and track analysis. So we're going to take a 10-lap session and break it up into three parts. The first part, we're going to focus on steering, turning into the corner. The next few laps, we're going to focus on unwinding. And then in the last laps of the session, we're going to pull it together with the pedals and incorporate the flat car concept. So for the first three laps, focusing on turning the wheel into each corner, what we want to focus on is getting to maximum steering input before we apply any throttle and just before the apex. So we want to take full advantage of whatever cornering force and grip can be generated by turning the wheel and really turning over the front tires and getting them on the sweet spot of grip. This is going to allow us and set us up to unwind the wheel through exit for each corner. So here's a demonstration where we sort of over-exaggerate a little bit, but trying to get to that steering maximum point before the apex of turn one, unwinding through that curbing and all the way through the exit. This doesn't necessarily apply through the S's where we're really just trying to minimize any scrub at all and gently transferring the weight back and forth. But up here in the bus stop, especially when we're turning back to the left to get out of the corner. We want to make sure we're really actually turning the car with a little bit of wheel input. Again, maxing it out here in turn five. Breaking into turn six, trying to get a lot of wheel input so we can unwind for quite a bit of time. And again, these are over-exaggerated inputs to show just exactly where that peak steering input should be roughly in, in each corner. What's happening is actually steering past the point of effective slip angle of the front tires, inducing a little bit of understeer. And then when unwinding, that grip comes back and the front end resumes turning. But again, at Watkins Glen, it helps a lot to keep a bit of steering input in the car and gradually unwind. So getting to maximum steering input, oops, missed that apex quite a bit, but getting to maximum steering input before the apex to set that up is really the goal of these, these first few laps. So now we're going to jump ahead. focus on unwinding the wheel and again want to make sure to get two maximum steering wheel input but then gradually unwind the wheel especially right after reaching max steering input once we back off a little bit especially if we've gone a little bit too far that's pretty much right in the sweet spot of grip just right under the limit of what the front tires can handle and maintaining that level of input for just a little bit of time and taking full advantage of that maximum level of, of cornering grip for a moment to get the car pointed up the track can be really helpful. And then from there, unwinding just enough so that the momentum that's building under wide open throttle doesn't cause excess scrub on exit. And if you do the two right together, you can carry a lot of momentum onto the straightaways. So especially here in the in the toe and the heel, 
but really many of the corners managing that unwinding phase, starting it early before the apex, but gradually letting out the wheel all the way through exit. Again, taking advantage of that sweet spot of grip when backing off from the maximum point of steering input just prior to the apex. And the last note about making sure to really crank the wheel over and managing unwinding. This is typically in the coasting period, just after braking is finished and just before applying the throttle, and is a way to manage rotation by inducing a little bit of understeer and or by slowing the car with a bit of input. So now we've got several laps in the book, so we're going to jump ahead to the last lap. I'm going to change our camera view so you can see the external body movement. And this one's all about flat car. So we're trying to make sure to manage the balance of the car externally so that there are no excessive movements. And this is a convenient camera view in iRacing to just monitor that. The way to achieve a flat car, there's a few things. The first is by introducing each input gradually before applying it more intentionally, or I should say uh, more directly. So for example, coming into turn six, I'm gonna watch the brake input gradually increase up to the main, the maximum amount and then gradually decrease before getting back on the throttle. Up here in the toe, coming off of the trail brake, you can watch a progressive throttle increase and then finally maximum throttle once the exit trajectory is achieved. And that keeps, we already talked about a lot of these concepts, but just taking the edge off the inputs helps keep too much weight from being shifted. And the idea here is to maximize the total amount of grip across all four tires. Because even though when we shift weight towards the outside tires, they do gain some grip, more grip is lost off of the inside tires. So to maximize all four, we want to minimize that weight transfer. And there's definitely an opportunity for improvement there in turn 10 to 11 transferring that. But anyway, there you have it, another 10 lap exercise focusing on reaching maximum steering wheel input before the apex, unwinding to take advantage of that sweet spot of grip just after turning over the wheel and managing that unwinding phase through the long corners at Watkins, and then finally pulling it all together with the flat car concept introducing each input and minimizing body roll and excessive weight transfer, allowing the car to settle in between each corner and each phase of cornering. There's just one more video in this series. Stick around for the final video where we stop analyzing and overanalyzing the track so much and basically just send it in and out of each corner. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.